In this video, we are going to do an overview of one of the most recognizable medium mechs in the entirety of Battletech and Mech Warrior. Its popularity has grown from influences outside of the universe and tabletop game, most notably from its appearance in Mech Warrior Online. Deployed by every house, but more so by the Draconis Combine, Capellan Confederation, and eventually Free Worlds League, and a mech with endless variants and configurations, Today we are going to talk about Nissan General Industries Hunchback. A medium mech weighing in at 50 tons, the Hunchback is a war machine from the early era of the Star League in 2572. The HPK series would find a home in any military that would take it, from the periphery states to the Star League Defense Forces. Houses would also adopt the design, though most prominently Liao, Karita, and eventually Merrick. This machine's original and primary production model would operate as a close quarters machine, proving its worth most of all in city fights and dense terrain, where it could be used almost as a mech-based assault gun, walking up to entrenched positions or moving with the protection of building forests or hills to prevent it from taking fire before it unleashed its massive cannon. It also acted almost as a duelist mech at times as well, which endeared it to both the Capellans and the Combine. The HPK, however, would prove extremely adaptable to change and would become one of the most modified mechs of the Succession Wars themselves, changing out its autocannon for an assortment of other weapon systems, making it, as a chassis, one of the most successful mech chassis in the entirety of the era due to its simplicity and responsiveness to alterations. It would be a familiar figure in every major conflict, from the Ameris Civil War all the way through to the Dark Age and beyond. Whole mechs outside of itself, in fact, were inspired by its design as well, being the spiritual successors with the passage of time like the Clan Hunchback 2C and the Quasimodo of the 3140s. The primary model of the Hunchback during the Succession Wars is the HBK-4G which has a fearsome reputation due to one key point of the mech. But first, let's start with the engine. Powered by a 200 Nissan standard engine, the HBK4G has a maximum speed of 64 km per hour, or six movement points in the tabletop game. This is the average speed of strategic forces that involve heavies and medium mechs, meaning that it is adequate for the HBK to move at this speed. Tactically, while not as fast as some medium mechs, the HPK is not too slow to perform its role, and lines up with other, similar line mechs of the time. For cooling, the HPK-4G has a total of 13 heatsinks, allowing it to run relatively cool when using its primary weapon system and secondaries as well. For offensive abilities, the HPK-4G is essentially one weapon, with three others tagged on to deceive the pilot that they may have some other role on the battlefield. They don't. The HPK-4G is a heavily armored Tomodorazu autocannon mount, Type 20 delivery system, or an AC-20 delivery system. This is the lightest mech in the original 3025 to carry such an enormous cannon in its stock variant, which can land devastating hammer blows on any enemy mech foolish enough to end up in its front arc. This is a weapon so powerful that it can destroy a light mech in a single direct hit. The Hunchback also has two tons of ammunition to feed this beast. The hunch which it is known for is in fact just the shape of the hull used to fit this enormous gun. Outside of this it has two Ichigaba 2000 medium lasers, one in each arm, and a diverse optics type 10 small laser mounted in the head. For armor, the HPK is one of the most defended medium mechs in Battletech, and is as protected as mechs which are much heavier, such as the Dragon or the Warhammer. This means the HPK-4G has a full 10 tons of standard armor. It does, however, have an Achilles heel, which is that its rear armor is very poorly protected, and if the left torso is pierced from behind, it can lead to a catastrophic ammunition explosion, which will most certainly destroy the Hunchback. The HBK-4G is an exciting and powerful design. Simple and used prolifically, especially during the Succession Wars, its enormous autocannon is something that can put terror in the hearts of any pilot, even those of vaunted assault mechs, due to its head-cracking power, and all it could take is one lucky shot. 
Beyond this, it's armored and can act as a bodyguard, assault gun, city fighter, or anti-heavy brawler depending on circumstances. It, however, is not without weaknesses, such as the aforementioned rear armor, as well as the fact it has no real defense against long-range fire, other than to seek cover and rely on its own armored protection until it can close the distance or until lancemates can subdue the threat or suppress it. The HBK series is immeasurably successful. I cannot cover all the variants here today, but just to give perspective, during the Succession Wars, these series were all produced along with the 4G to satisfy a multitude of rules. The 4N, the 4J, the 4H, the 4P, and the 4SP. In total, we are going to cover three variants here in this video, one from the Star League, one from the Clan Invasion, and one that would be one of the more advanced models currently found and produced in the Inner Sphere. The HBK-4N reimagines the entire purpose of the Hunchback. Instead of being a brutal enclosed slugging machine with an enormous cannon, it switches this role to that of a multi-layered weapons delivery system mech balanced across multiple ranges and principally taking up the role of a direct fire mech. Replacing the AC-20 with an AC-5 with its freed up weight, it would install two LRM-5s as well, giving it quite a battery for long range engagements. Then, for close range protection, it has two additional medium lasers, meaning that it has four medium lasers to protect itself in close, which is not insubstantial. Still heavily armored, this figure becomes a defensive bastion, or even a support mech for medium and heavy lances. This shows the versatility of what is possible with the HPK series, as many other radical alterations like this are seen in its cousin configurations as well. The HPK-5M is essentially an HPK-4G, but with double heatsinks, solving a problem which the HPK essentially didn't have. So we are going to be looking at another variant instead for the mainline clan invasion model. The HBK-5S would appear in the latter stages of the clan invasion around 3058 and was produced by the Lyran Commonwealth. It included endo steel, a light engine, and would add jump jets to the design. But most fascinatingly, it would replace the AC-20 with an LBX-20, giving it a new way to deliver death. This cannon shoots further than the AC-20, but also has the benefit of either firing solid rounds, which must be installed before the battle, or LBX rounds, essentially shotgun rounds, which can scatter over the entire machine it is targeting in a giant buckshot explosion. Extremely dangerous, and also fitted with pulse lasers instead of normal lasers, this mech is a horrifying update to the concepts behind the HBK-4G. The HBK-7R is a hunchback designed by the Republic of the Sphere after the horrors of the Blakest attack on the Sphere itself. It has a reinforced structure system, making it harder to critically hit and making it harder to destroy. It mounts an Ultra AC-10 autocannon, giving it good range and great striking power, as well as two ER medium lasers. It also has better armor than the original, with light ferro fibers, but of the same weight, and carries a tag in its head, as well as an ECM suite. The 7R is a hardy, hard-hitting machine, very much succeeding the HPK-4H's family tree, another model from the Succession Wars. Overall, the Hunchback is a machine which is renowned for many reasons. Its main variants hit like a pickup truck and leave lasting marks on their enemies. They are also incredibly adaptable, allowing the design to receive a wide range of refits that can fundamentally change its role on the battlefield, either at a production level or even as field refit kits. A staple of Inner Sphere forces, the Hunchback has been fighting for over 500 years in the Inner Sphere. There is no sign of this changing anytime soon, as new technologies continue to allow the unit to be retrofit. But the truth is, it's hard to replace a sledgehammer with something that's not just another sledgehammer anyway. So why bother completely replacing it? Thank you for joining me here today. If you enjoyed this content, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. There is a YouTube member program as well, which does support this channel, and I greatly appreciate the support from members. 
With that, I will catch all of you in the comment section below.